What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Kirk Allen of Reshift Media. You can check him out at reshiftmedia.com. Kirk, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. Since this is part of the Top Agency series, a couple really good ones. I had a D. Clevett on. She is an agency. She does done for you SOPs. Or, you know, the non-sexy stuff that helps us run the business. So she'll go in, help document all the companies or whatever companies uh, they want their SOPs uh, with the staff and the owner. So it's uh, that's a great episode. We shared our favorite productivity tools, software. Another really good one uh, was Todd Tasky. Todd Tasky uh, app helps match private equity with agencies. He helps sell agencies. He's got the Second Bite podcast. He talks a lot about the... Uh, the exit and M&A space. Um, and so that's a really good episode where he talks about the valuations, the agency space and everything in between. Uh, also, Jason Swank. Uh, Jason Swank talked about how he built up his agency to eight figures and sold it and then had been acquiring agencies, which is interesting. So check out that and many more on inspiredinsider.com. Uh, this episode is actually brought to you by Rise25. Uh, Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream relationships and partnerships. And how do we do that? We do that by helping you run your podcast. We're an easy button for a company to launch and run a podcast. We do the strategy, the accountability, and the full execution. And Kirk, we call ourselves the magic elves that run in the background and make it look easy for the host so they can run their business and create amazing content and develop great relationships. You know, for me, uh, the number one thing in my life is relationships, and I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I have found no better way over the past decade to profile the people and companies I most admire and share with the world what they're working on. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com or email us at support at rise25.com. I'm excited to introduce Kirk Allen. He's a former member of the Canadian Franchise Association, board of directors, and co-founder of Reshift Media. Reshift Media is an award-winning digital marketing agency based in Toronto, and their latest accolades include two-time winner of the best franchise marketing firm at the Global Franchise Awards, and Reshift has actually developed some, some proprietary digital marketing platform to generate leads which is designed specifically for franchise companies. And I'm excited to share uh, Reshift Media and Kirk. Kirk, thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. We'll talk about how everything began, but first just give people a little overview on Reshift Media and, and what you do. Great, uh, thank you. Um, so Reshift Media is a digital marketing firm uh, based in Toronto. Um, everything we do is digital. So social media, search. Oh, that's great. Having and by that. the way, if you're watching, just listening to the audio, there is a video version. And here we are on Reshift Media. Well, I, I'm super happy that you have our website up. Um, Jeremy, if we would have had this um, interview a few years ago, we had our old website from when we first started 12 years ago. And it wasn't very good. <laughs> I'll have to go so, on the Wayback Machine and, and find it. You, yeah. Yes, in the Wayback Machine, you can, in fact. I uh, love that you know that, actually. Um, but this is our new website we launched a couple of years ago. And um, you know, we're very proud of it because it actually is something we do. We, we build, design uh, websites. We do apps, of course. And anything to do with digital. So social media, SEO, SEM. And there is the award uh, that uh, you just scrolled by that I think maybe your folks uh, found us as a result of this best uh, franchise marketing firm in 2023. And we won again this past um, February in 2024. So we're a digital marketing uh, firm, uh, everything from uh, websites, apps, uh, social media, search, uh, anything to do with digital marketing. That's what we do, sir. So talk about, you know, now that we're on the website and you redid the website after a number of years, what did you make sure to include in this redesign and revamping that wasn't there? 
lots of content, um, lots of uh, testimonials. You know, you know, there's got to be 40 or 50 of them, but then examples of our work um, and case studies. So we are very proud that, um, you know, the first client we started with uh, back in 2012, and we pride ourselves that they are still a customer of ours today. And that, that's uh, the UPS store that you just scrolled by. So we build long-standing relationships, um, and uh, we love seeing our customers grow. So in the franchising space, which is probably where the bulk of our customers lie, you know, they, they start off with maybe 10, 20, 30 locations, and they all aspire to become bigger and sell more locations and open more locations. So we have many um, cases where, you know, we start with a brand that has a handful of locations, and today they may have two, 300 locations. And, uh, you know, we take pride in being part of that success, designing their website, making sure that they're being found. So you ask about, you know, what we put into this. Well, a lot of our leads, uh, new customers come from the website where people from different countries around the world will actually find us through our blog. So blog is a great way of uh, generating fresh content for a website. And we do that for a lot of our uh, customers uh, as well, where we write uh, regular blogs, feed it um, into the website, promote it on social media, and all of that works together for you know optimizing a search and uh, helping that brand being found. And it's no different for ourselves. So uh, it's a big part. Uh, the SEO plays a big, big part of the role here on a new website. How did you get your first client? The first client is pretty big being UPS. Well, well, I had known the, um, the president uh, here in Canada uh, for a number of years, um, going back to my previous life. So I used to be in the newspaper business. And that's where I met the um, uh, president of the UPS store. I worked for um, a newspaper in Montreal called the Montreal Gazette, and eventually moved up to Toronto to head up uh, advertising sales and digital sales for uh, Can West, and eventually that became Post Media. And um, so, you know, newspapers back in the day, they were powerful. Um, so go back to 2012 and. Uh, you know, retailers uh, would run ads in um, newspapers, and people would show up at their door. Uh, they were they had great reach, uh, great readership, and they were very very effective. So, 2012, believe it or not, Jeremy, um, I was uh, head of sales for uh, Post Media, and um, I could see the advertising revenue shifting from. So traditional media, whether it was radio, TV, newspapers, into digital. So it was going to social media. It was going to brands' websites. It was going to Google, and of course, at the time, display. So the newspapers all built websites, and um, my uh, current business partner, Steve Bures, who built Reshift with me, he was the one building all the websites for the newspapers. And I was getting the salespeople to sell ads, display ads on the, the newspapers, but it was really 10 cents on the dollar. So, you know, um, you'd sell a full page ad in a newspaper, 10,000, but you'd sell a display campaign for a hundred or thousand dollars. So it wasn't anywhere near the same kind of revenue. So um, at the time, um, we were proposing to open a digital arm of uh, the newspapers where we would sell social media, search and build websites. And I won't name the person, but one of the, the owners of the newspaper chain said, this is 2012, Jeremy, said there's no future in social media. 2012. So, um, so I left uh, shortly after that. And um, uh, Steve Bures, my business partner, and I opened Reshift Media, knowing that there was monies shifting from traditional media into digital. So when we opened Reshift in 2012, there weren't a lot of pure digital ad agencies. Traditional agencies 
may have had an arm that did digital, um, but they also outsourced a lot of the work because they didn't have the expertise. So that's how we started the business was we knew there was a shift in traditional media into digital. And the way we got our, our first customer <laughs> um, was they were on their phone looking for their own stores and their stores wouldn't come up in a search. And I said, we can help you fix that. Built them a new website, got them all set up on uh, Google My Business. Back then it was called something else. Google changed the name every year, it seems. I set them up on a proper website with local pages. And now um, that's the, the recipe, right? You have to have local pages for every store, helped with search. Um, but that's how we actually got our first customer was helping them. People find them through Google on a website, rebuilt their website. Kirk, did you take the plunge? Because again, you were in newspaper for probably over 25 years. Did you take the plunge before or after you got this client? Always before. It, we opened before. our doors, we had no clients. Zero. We had, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, no one's ever asked me that question before. But um, no, we had no clients. And we had- Timing's uh, everything here. I don't know if you're married at the time. You have to go back and tell a significant other. Um, nope. Yeah, I'm just we, opening up with no clients. What, what, is, what does life look like when you took the plunge? Very risky. <laughs> very risky. So we, um, we have uh, some private investors. So we, we actually went to market to say, hey, guys, uh, went to angel investors, basically, and said, we want to open this business. And here's the concept. And here we, we see the money shifting. Uh, would you be interested in investing? We probably only made maybe 10, 12 pitches and five people gave us money um, as seed capital. So we needed some money to get things started. We rented a nice office downtown Toronto. We had uh, six full-time staff and zero clients. But <laughs> we knew that so you, we probably, you came out swinging. Oh, yeah. We, well, we, we, we knew we had enough money to get through six months of operation. We knew that it would take us at least six months to find some potential clients, pitch them, do the work, and collect the money before we ran out of funds. So, so that's what we did. And, uh, you know, at the beginning, it was, it was tight. Um, of course, Steve and I didn't take a salary. But uh, eventually, we built up to the point where today we have about 200 customers in 20 country, countries around the world. And um, we get a lot of referrals. We so at what point did you get the first client then in, in this timeline? Because I, I would be, I would be worried. Like six oh, months yeah. is not that long of a time period. Two months. We we had a customer uh, within a few. We had half a dozen customers in the first six months. Wow. Yeah, not all big, right? Varying sizes, but you know, we we put a lot of you know um, sweat equity into all of these customers to you know do the best we could and. We have such a great team at Reshift. We have fantastic, the original staff, uh, all but one are, all but two, all but one are still there. All but two are still there. And they, they're fantastic. They have great teams. They hire great people. Um, and uh, we're blessed that we have you know, such a strong team. Um, they are leaders in every category. So we have, you know, the best social media person, the best search person, the best designer, best IT per, uh, person and their team. So, um, you know, we can tackle any problem. And um, our customers love our team because when they ask a question, we typically have a solution. Uh, that's for sure. So, And in the beginning, you know, you are the salesperson, so you kind of have a handle the sales and pricing, and then your partner 
on the kind of fulfillment side. So it seems like you had kind of both covered from the beginning and then you hired people, obviously, under those of those categories. Exactly. So um, Steve, my business partner, this guy, he, this guy is so smart, such a, a great partner. Um, so I'm out, you know, um, seeing customers and Steve is making sure the the workings is being completed. He's our CEO, um, and uh, we had we hired one head of search, one head of social, one designer, and um, one head of uh, IT. Those were key pillars uh, for the company. And then they went as we grew. At the beginning, we didn't have the luxury of having people blow each one of them. Uh, today, we're probably forty staff. I'll I'll say. Um, but as we grew, we added staff. Um, you know, some sometimes were you know uh, hard to get the work out the door, but we were very cautious and you know, we don't outsource anything. So we don't have any everything we do um, is in house. We don't offshore anything. Uh, so everyone works for Reshift Media here in Canada. Um, we now have the luxury of hiring a few people across the country to get the best possible talent. So we have someone, you know, Vancouver, Ireland, all the way to Nova Scotia and in between. But the bulk of our staff are here in uh, Toronto. Talk about retention and culture for a second, because as you said, some of those first core staff members, are well, most of them are still there. And what are some of the things that you do as a company that helps with uh, retention and culture? Well, I think for one is, the, the staff can learn so much from not only our senior team, but our wide array of customers we have. So they aren't stuck working on a single account. They're working on multiple um, brands in different categories. So the, the amount of um, learning that happens for the, the staff because of the, the, the variety of customers we have is really key. The learning they, they you know the learning they get from uh, our staff is second to none because they really are you know experts in their field and they're very sharing. They want to see their staff grow, um, and then we and we try to have some fun too. Um, so you know one of the things we do is we have events. Um, we have a winter event, a summer event. Um, a couple of years ago, we rented a boat, went around Toronto Harbor. We usually have a barbecue every summer. We've gone axe throwing. We went tubing up north, which was a blast. So we all went tubing and then went had a hamburger and beer after, and then we all went home after that. Um, and then every once in a while, we have virtual events. So we've had a magician, um, you know, join our uh, weekly call. Uh, we've done things like that, you know, play different word games online. So we, we, you know, we work hard, but we also like to have some fun along the way. And but I think the real value uh, for our team is the learning we get from the various uh, customer, you know, challenges, and also from the senior team as well. You know, you've obviously very experienced and been doing this over a decade um, in the franchise space. So I'm, you've seen a bunch of trends. So I love to hear, I don't know, maybe recent trends, you know, maybe someone listening's uh, wanting to do their next uh, business idea, or maybe uh, have someone give, give them some uh, creative juices with what you see trends in the, in the franchising space. Well, I would say in the last few years, uh, franchising is pretty hot. Like there's, in terms of people looking to buy into a franchise, it is at an all-time uh, high. Circle back to before COVID, and you know different companies have franchise shows. So, the Canadian Franchise Association has a few shows a year. You know, two in Toronto, two out west, one in Calgary, where the brands would go and you know say, "Hey, I've got the best franchise for you to buy." Um, and before COVID, the attendance of those shows was in decline. COVID hits, they stopped. And then things opened up again and they started back up. 
the attendance at these shows has been at an all-time high. Like, for example, the Canadian Franchise Association uh, shows are more attendance than ever before. And then we see it on the marketing side as well. So, you know, you know Google Trends, people buy my own business, work from home, you know, work for myself, best franchise to buy. So we're seeing trends uh, such as um, service-based businesses is pretty hot right now. So not having to own a brick and mortar uh, location. Um, now, there's still lots of brick and mortar franchises out there, especially in the QSR business. They're doing great. Um, and, um, you know, I've done exceptionally well through COVID, especially if they had a drive through and delivery is really big. So, you know, there are people who've got more capital and they've got half a million dollars or a million dollars. You can open a really nice brand, top brand QSR and do very well for you and your family. For those who don't want to have a own a you know, a physical location, um, service-based brands, whether it's window cleaning or painting, those types of companies are doing exceptionally well right now because there's a lower cost of entry. You don't have the build-out cost. And um, they typically, you know, have the, you know, have it fear, figured out where, you know, there's customers out there looking to have their houses painted or their windows cleaned or their lawns cut or, you know, um, they, there's all sorts of different businesses, right? So they are quite popular right now, but franchising in general to be your own boss. Um, so you're in business by yourself, but not uh, for yourself, but not by yourself. So in other words, you're the boss of that franchise, um, but there's a proven formula on how it operates. So whether it's the UPS store, or whether it's you know Dogtopia, which is a great um, dog daycare franchise in North America, um, there's businesses out there, and um, it seems that COVID kind of forced people to think about: Do I really want to work for someone else and risk losing my job if that business goes under? Um, owning your own business, like a franchise, is a great way because someone else has done the the work to you know make sure it's a viable business, and you've got some money and your own, your own boss. Um, so you know we work a, with a lot of franchise systems, and um, I sat on the board of directors uh, for the Canadian Franchise Association for a number of years. Was the chair of the supplier committee. Uh, was very involved in you know. You know, everything from, you know, uh, you know, advocacy where we're on Parliament Hill talking with politicians about, you know, the you know the size of franchise in Canada. It's actually the twelfth largest industry in Canada, franchising. So it's huge um, and employs a lot of people in Canada. Um, and we're fortunate to be working with some of the top uh, brands in franchising. Um, so it's a, it's a great, uh, great industry and um, a great business to be in. I'm going to share this. I, was, I, was, I had some research pulled up here. Kirk, I'm not sure how accurate it is, obviously. But um, let me uh, share this. And, and I'm curious, what are some other examples? You gave a few of the service-based businesses. But we're looking at, this says fastest growing franchises right now today. It may change in the future, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this is on Entrepreneur. Yeah. And a lot of these are actually service ones. You have Stratus Building Solutions, environmentally friendly commercial cleaning and disinfecting. It's showing mm -hmm. right now as the number one fastest growing. I don't, again, I can't, uh, I haven't fact checked the accuracy of this. This is on entrepreneur.com. Then yeah. you have Crumble Cookies, Jersey Mike's, which I was surprised about this one. Dream Vacations, travel agencies. I'm like, yeah, how is that yeah, I know. number four? <laughs> and then the, you mentioned this actually commercial clean. There's number five and six are commercial cleaning. Like yeah. actually one, one, five and six are all commercial cleaning. And then you have Stroll with this, you know, some kind of monthly publication. And then Kona Ice, which I've actually hired them to have a shaved ice truck. Taco Bell and scooters. So 
Yeah. Does this list surprise you? Does this look accurate? No, and Entrepreneur is great, by the way. Uh, their list, they have like the you no know, uh, best uh, restaurant franchise. They have the fastest growing ranch, uh, franchise. They have the best emerging franchises. Um, so this doesn't surprise me at all. Der- Jersey Mike's just came into Canada, by the way. Hmm. I love Jersey uh, Mike's. A yeah. couple locations, and they are now expanding into Canada. Dream Vacations, I would imagine that's a work from home. You see the initial investment, $2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's probably work from home, be a travel agent, a supply leads and a website and that sort of thing. But service-based businesses and the, the top five there are you know more industrial. And there's all the home-based ones, right? So as you would scroll down, you know, there would be, um, you know, different ones uh, that would be, um, you know, uh, servicing the uh, oh, surf pro looks like something. Yeah. Yeah. That's a uh, fire restoration. Oh. There's another yeah. travel agency, cruise yeah. planners. I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah, I know. I know. They, their lists are quite, uh, quite good. Um, in fact, we're listed in entrepreneur <laughs> under uh, top uh, franchise marketing or technology firms. I think we're number. 12 or something like that. Um, but uh, there's the UPS store and, uh, you know, you go down and there's some really, really good ones. Um, but this is an excellent list. Uh, Entrepreneur slices and dices it by category. Um, and they've got a lot of data. So this is what I like about Entrepreneur. It is voted upon. Um, so it's not like um, you pay and you get to the top of the list. Is actually a voting uh, that takes place um, in order to make it on the list. Yeah. This is, yeah, I'm actually surprised by a bunch of these. You mentioned Dogtopia. Can you talk mm-hmm. about some of the work and, and what you do with them? Yeah, so Dogtopia, when we started working with them, um, I think they had 37 locations. Um, but today they're well over 250 with a lot in the pipeline still to open, but we do everything for them. We started, we built their website, we you know, got their digital presence in order. Uh, we do their, their advertising for them. And in fact, the, um, global franchise award, um, the, um, case study, uh, we did for them about lead generation because they're basically they're looking for people to um, bring their dogs to their 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 daycares, and it's such a cool place. They've got like three rooms: little dogs, medium sized dogs, and big dogs. And so, you know, you um, you basically take your dog to Dogtopia, and they spend the day there. They have a spa there, so if you want to get your the, your dog uh, groomed during the day, you can. Um, it's a fantastic concept. So, um, yeah, we've done, uh, you know, everything in terms of digital for them uh, over the years and very proud to say we've seen them grow, uh, over the years. And in fact, the global franchise award is, a, a direct result of the lead generation campaign we do for their local locations. Kirk, talk about that for a second. I mean, even if someone's not a franchise what are some of the the mistakes and things that worked from a lead generation standpoint? And maybe talk to Dogtopia. What worked from lead generation that other any any companies besides you know franchises should be doing for their business? Uh, you know that's a really good question. So you know often the 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 shiny object um, people think oh we should be you know on TikTok because it's the newest and my kids are on TikTok. But sometimes um, the newest and latest um, platforms may not be at that time the best choice. Um, so today, you know, Meta, so Facebook and Instagram, you'll get people saying, oh, aren't they declining and, you know, kids aren't using it anymore? Well, yes, maybe kids aren't on Facebook as much anymore, but they're certainly on Instagram. And the audience that Dogtopia is trying to reach they're certainly on Facebook and very easy to target people who, you know, like dogs or like pets in a certain demographic, age, gender, and geography. So what we like um, about, you know, Meta, for example, 
is you can target just around a five mile radius around a doctopia, which is the general catchment area, combined with Google. If someone looks for dog daycare or dog boarding or dog grooming, up comes a dogtopia ad for that local area. Um, but you have to do testing. So there's there's not one silver bullet, and we've done a lot of testing over the years to make sure we've got it really honed in. And we are testing TikTok as well. But you kind of go back to the the old tried and proven uh, platforms like Meta um, and Google AdWords that work very, very well, especially in their case, lead generation. They want someone to fill in a form, come in for a, a visit, uh, with their dog, and then sign up to uh, you know take their dog to daycare. So it depends on every client's a little bit different. Um, we have some customers where let's say QSRs, and they want to track um, these guys track leads, um, but uh, let's say QSR want to track uh, actual sales, and most of their let's say a pizza place. Most of their sales nowadays are online, right? People order and have a pizza delivered. Well, they want to know how many sales did I generate from that campaign and what's the value of those sales? So you can you know, put on a, um, a Facebook uh, conversion pixel and track stuff like that. So we've developed a, a platform called the Brand Amplifier where a local franchisee can run a Local Meta, Google, um, soon to be um, TikTok in their local market, and be able to track the not only how many people they've reached and how many times they saw the ad, what are the sales generated from that campaign? And for a think of a, a local franchisee, this, this is like you know, like this is the dream, right? Now I know I spent. $1,000 in the month of July and it generated X number of sales and X number of new customers. So the, the tracking available today, and that, you know, depends on your POS and depends on some integrations, but to be able to track to that degree is fantastic, right? And so for local franchisee, they're always like, well, I don't know what I got for my, my investment. Well, now you can find that out. Um, so our brand amplifier has been a big, big part of our success, uh, Jeremy, to um, for local franchisees to run pre-approved, on-brand, current promotions in their local market using their own credit card. So head office doesn't have to chase them around for money. Um, they, they actually pay for the ads using their own credit card, and they're all pre-approved, and they work. So. That's uh, been part of our uh, growth as well. Now, can is that a self-serve or are you running it for them? It can be a self-serve where they just log in. Um, we would be the ones creating ads for them, or it could be used as SaaS. So in some cases, um, they would have an agency or head office has a large social media department who builds the ads in the platform and the local franchisee would be given access and they log in. If they're a multi-unit owner, they would have access to all their locations and um, self-serve from the franchisee point of view. But, but it could also be run by the um, QSR um, as a SaaS if they want, or we can provide the service if they don't have that capacity. So there, there could be agencies that will use your platform and pay you like from a SaaS perspective? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we have a lot of agents that, that do that uh, because they find that when you run, that's a really good question. So often an agency takes the easy way, way out and they run a national campaign that's not localized. So they run the ads where they've got locations or a city where they have locations, but they don't go to the trouble of really, you know, zoning in on exactly that local market where, and it's proven every campaign that we've run, the results 
from a local campaign will be better than from a national campaign, simply because of the localization and the relevance of that local campaign to the audience that sees it. Just imagine, you see a, an ad on Facebook or Instagram, and it's got the brand name and the address or the cross street. Oh, there's one right here. So you don't have to go to find a location near you. With every click, you're going to lose people. So this way, the relevance is there, the um, the targeting is there, no wasted uh, ad dollars, and the franchisees love it because it's effective. And these agencies have a, a better, more effective campaign. So Kirk, in this sense, let's say there is an agency listening to this and like, I want to use Kirk's platform. Where do they go? Do they go to reshiftmedia.com or is there a separate site? Or we have a separate you? site, uh, brandamplifier.io, brandamplifier.io, um, or just find me on LinkedIn. Cool. <laughs> find me on LinkedIn or go to, you know, either way, there's multiple ways to find us. Go to the reshiftmedia.com, fill in a form, go to brandamplifier.io, go to LinkedIn. This is it right here. That contact us. And uh, fill in a form. This is it right here. I'm yeah, looking that's at. That's it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So everyone, you know, if you are an agency, I mean, obviously, if you you don't want to touch this stuff, obviously, you call, you know, Kirk and their team, and they can do it all for you. But if you are an agency and you want to use their platform, that's available. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that stuck out to me on your website, Kirk, was the social media contests and promotions. I'm wondering if there is a favorite throughout the years. It's a uh, innovative cool contest or promotion that you want to talk about boy that's we've done so many you know and you know the funny thing is jeremy sometimes the ones that you don't think will be successful blow the numbers out of the water and um there was one it was a promotion for dog tick medita uh, medication. Yeah. And it was called Lone Star Louie was the uh, the character. And we said, oh, this is not going to work. <laughs> we were, and it, the numbers were off the charts. Good old Lone Star Louie who came over, you know, from Mexico and came up through the, the U.S. to, you know, hop onto dogs um was a huge huge hit it, it was one of those where you go oh my god like look at all the shares look at all the like why and, do you think uh, it hit like that so, i don't you know sometimes you you just well the targeting is very good with meta right so it was dog owner so that certainly gave us a leg up and the character with that was designed uh, was quite uh, good and catchy as well. But um, yeah, I, I think contest, um, you sometimes you really, you know, people talk about, oh, it's going to go viral. Things don't go viral. And I like it. You, you got to put money against it uh, to make things go viral. Um, so that's an old, like, I want my campaign to go viral. It just doesn't happen like that. So yeah, the, sometimes the, the best campaign you think is going to be great is a dud. Um, so it, there's so many factors. It's hard to know what caused the campaign to fail. Sometimes, usually, you know, the ones that fail the why, but the ones that succeed sometimes surprise you. I'm trying to pull it up here to see. Um, I think oh, I have really, it. I don't, it's still around. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. I, I think um, the. You know, what, what's interesting is um, with this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen here um, and we can take a quick look at it because I had the one of the founders of the Harmon Brothers on and kind of echoing what you said. They have a lot of, do you think of Squatty Potty and poo, you know, po, you know, Poopery and those ones? That, like you said, quote, if you look them on YouTube, they have millions and millions and millions of views across them. But 
when I was talking to him, he's like, they put a ton of traffic behind it, right? So when people are like, oh, this went viral, yeah, well, if you're spending a million dollars, it makes it a little bit easier, right? Yeah. And, and then it, it takes on a life of its own a little bit, but it's got to reach a certain critical mass from what he was yeah. saying. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They take off, but there's typically um, money behind it. There's typically an ad spend. It's kind of like, uh, what was the... Um, What's that deodorant? The um, I think of it. Doctor Squatch. No, no, um, uh. but it was you know that one took off, but it, there was huge amount of ad budget behind it too. So this is the one that we're looking at. Is this the right one? I'm not sure if that's the, that's the character. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this character, but uh, that's not the specific campaign, but yeah. Well, there's a can Canadian flag on that. Yeah, 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 yeah there he is <laughs> traveling. Like Canada. <laughs> yeah, craziness. Yeah, this must be it. Yeah, yeah. The new tick in town. The new, new tick in town. That's right. Good, right. good for you. But um, yeah, it's uh, sometimes you, you don't know why something takes off. But typically, there's people don't know this, but there's usually an ad spend behind it. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I have one last question for you. Um, before I ask it, I just want to point people to check out reshiftmedia.com um, to learn more and all things there. And my last question is about resources. You know, throughout your career, I'm curious, some of your favorite resources, it could be a mentor, colleague, it could be a book, it could be a software. What are some of your favorite resources that you used uh, in your business journey? You know, a, a big part of our success has been the Canadian Franchise Association. And um, getting involved with them, you learn so much. So it's one thing to be a member, Jeremy, but we became members of the CFA six months into our business. And that was driven by um, David Drucker, the president of the UPS store, said, Kirk, you should join this, this CFA because you're going to learn a ton and probably make some great contacts. And so we did join, and then we became NAS national sponsors. Um, and then I, we um, got involved in all sorts of different committees at the um, CFA. So you know, getting involved... You know, being a member is one thing, but getting involved and you learn so much from getting involved. It's amazing. And the contract contacts you make, many of which are friends of ours, um, are friends of mine and ours for life. Um, so, you know, I've made so many, but learned so much. And we've generated a lot of business over the years. And you you build up a you know a pretty good reputation over time, right? And um, and then business comes to you like people basically go call Kirk or call the C call the reshift guys, call Steve, call Jen, call Gally, and um, that has been as a resource. And then the other one is the IFA, so the International Franchise Association, has been very very good as well. And um, we typically speak um, at all of these conventions. And the way we position ourselves is being credible and experts on a particular subject matter. So we never go up there and go, oh, Reshift Media, we're the best. We go up there and talk about you know, best practices in franchise development or you know, best SEO practices for a website. And you you actually, you know, by doing that, you build up a good reputation. And you mentioned at the beginning, Jeremy, that, you know, your contacts and relationships are huge. And I could not agree with you more. And uh, an old boss of mine, Dennis Skulski, who was my boss at Ken West? He was the president of Ken West for the, the newspapers. Said to me, Kirk, at the end of the day, all you have is your reputation. 
And, um, you know, that, that has huge value on its own. And really, Jeremy, we're all brands onto ourselves. So you, myself, our brands, even though we have companies and we work for companies, at the end of the day, it's you, it's me, individuals are all brands onto themselves. So that's something that stuck with me for many, many years ago and um, has been you know, guiding me um, along the way to make sure don't burn any bridges behind you. Make sure that you, you know, you're always uh, delivering on your promises. And um, it's, it's been uh, a lot of fun uh, to date and we continue to grow. And uh, I really love being on your podcast. So thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Kirk. I love that. All you have is your reputation and also some of the lessons you learned with just joining like-minded industry organizations, whatever niche someone's in to that's proven to me to be, you know, really the best use of my time is to surround myself with like-minded individuals in, in certain industries. So thank you, Kirk. Everyone can check out reshiftmedia.com or episodes of the podcast, and we will see everyone next time. And Kirk, thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Take care. What I got, you can't buy. It reflects between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.